de Joel Barciaucas. Es Engineer Manager de los equipos de la plataforma OpenEdX y EdX. Por tanto, es el responsable máximo de este software. Su equipo impulsa el desarrollo de OpenEdX fomentando la comunidad productiva y colaborativa de ingenieros, estudiantes y emprendedores. Antes de EdX fue responsable de los equipos de ingeniería de Blue State Digital, una agencia y producto de marketing digital que contribuyó a la elección de Barack Obama como presidente de Estados Unidos en 2008 y en 2012. Le apasiona que su trabajo esté orientado hacia el cumplimiento de una misión capaz de promover el cambio. I'd like to thank very much Joel uh, that he agreed to come here to present. It's really an honor and a pleasure to have you and introduce what is open next. Thank you very much, Joel. Um, thank you very much, uh, Carlos, for that, that very kind uh, introduction. Um, thanks, uh, everyone, uh, for, for coming and uh, seeing uh, my presentation on, on what is uh, open edX. Um, so uh, who am I? So Carlos was gracious enough to give a short introduction. Uh, my title, engineering manager for uh, the open edX and platform teams at edX. Um, I have my email address uh, right there, so um, feel free to uh, reach out to me anytime. It's very simple. It's just uh, joel at edX.org. Um, I, I, I think I started working at edX um, just early enough that they were still doing just the first name. Um, <laughs> I think maybe like just after me, uh, they started doing first initial last name, so I, I was very lucky. Um, so anyway, that's... Uh, that's me. Uh, so uh, who, who, are, who am I talking to? So I want to just get a sense of, of uh, sort of where you guys are all coming from in terms of your experience uh, with uh, MOOCs and uh, online learning. So who has uh, learned something online? I, I, I actually, I hope that everyone raised their hand because I, I mean, I, I, I just read Wikipedia all the time, right? I mean, it's, it's, there's so much information. Of course, you've, you've learned something online, but um, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, something that's a little bit uh, deeper, a little bit more sophisticated and diving deep into subjects beyond just sort of skimming these little bits and pieces, right? Um, so who's, who's taken an online course? Oh, that's, that's pretty great. Um, Who's been to uh, edX.org? Oh, oh that's, that's great. Who, who's taken a course on Coursera? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, great. So it sounds like you know you, you all have a, a pretty pretty good uh, understanding of, of you know online courses and, and what we're talking about. But um, I want to talk about the the technology behind them. Um, so what, what is open edX? And I think in order to, to really um, effectively answer that question, I think I really need to um, start talking about what is edX. Uh, so edX, it, it really depends on um, the context, on the, um, what you're, it has very many different meanings. So um, first of all, it's a nonprofit organization. Um, so we were formed as a nonprofit, uh, MIT and Harvard, came together to uh, create this organization. It was really important that it be nonprofit, not be venture funded. Um, that gives us a lot of, of flexibility. Um, and so we have uh, this, this mission um, as a nonprofit organization. We're a mission-driven organization. Um, does, any, does anyone know what edX's mission is? Does, has anyone heard it? Um, so our, our mission is to uh, deliver online education, uh, deliver quality education for everyone everywhere. So I mean that's like it's it's an odd, it's an audacious mission. It's it's huge. It's a huge mission that we're trying to accomplish. And we weren't that wasn't enough to just say okay we want to we want to do this. We're gonna hold ourselves accountable and we're gonna set a a goal for ourselves. And so we said we're going to educate a billion people. A billion. That's that's with nine zeros, right? Like that's that's a lot. Um, so how are we, we going to do that? Um, so uh, we have uh, this, this product at x.org. Um, it's amazing. It has uh, courses from um, you know, over 100 different institutions you saw from, from Carlos. Carlos actually stole some of my uh, slides here. So, um, so 
these uh, these organ are just some of the, the organizations, you know, MIT and Harvard, the founders, of course, Carlos and uh, everyone from UC3M, Berkeley, Microsoft, University of Queensland, the Linux Foundation, and, you know, a uh, hundred more. Um, so, you know, Carlos touched on just, you know, what edX.org has accomplished already. Um, and this is, it, it is just incredible to think about, you know, nearly 10 million learners, um, 1,200 uh, courses, um, 32 million course enrollments. So we're, we're, doing, we're doing pretty well with edX.org, right? Like, you know, 10 million, a billion, you know, we're, we're getting there. Um, but that brings us to, to the third sort of part of, of edX, which is <laughs> this platform, the technology, and the community that we refer to as open edX. So Carlos, again, had a, a version of this slide that I just, this is the, the next level of all of the different organizations that um, are, are on here. I, I should have double checked this slide. I think this is better on a, a dark background. Um, but there are, you can see, um, you know, uh, all kinds of different schools, uh, companies, uh, or nonprofit organizations. These are all organizations that are offering courses using the Open edX platform today. This is a small subset of all of them. This is not 300 logos up here. Um, and when we talk about 300 uh, sites, we're talking about the ones that, that we, we know about, right? So it's you know, people who we either have talked to us or we can find them or, or, or that, that sort of thing. An another uh, interesting thing that we're seeing with the Open edX platform is this, uh, this adoption by um, actual like large national initiatives. Um, so we're seeing in France, the Fran France Université Numérique, uh, they are, uh, they have uh, over a million learners on their platform um, that is totally separate from edX.org. Uh, the Edrock platform in Jordan, Darub in Saudi Arabia, um, Shui Tong in China. Shui Tong um, has, uh, they, just, they just released, a, a, they had an interview on, um, I think, Class Central, uh, and they, uh, they just passed 5 million learners uh, just on Shui Tong X. Um, so we think that we have, uh, you know, Shui Tong and all of those other uh, sites, the ones that we've talked to so far, you know, we, we think that we have heard about about 8 million learners on platforms that are not at x.org. So if we put this together and we think about all of the sites that we don't know about, you know, there have been at least 18 million people who have uh, learn something on the, the open edX platform. And so now like, okay, well, 20 million, all right, 1 billion. We're, we're only gonna get there uh, through the, the help of these other platforms as well as edX.org. Um, so, you know, we've, we've got 32 different languages, 52 different countries, um, people have launched uh, open edX platforms. Um, it's, just sort of mind blowing to to think about uh, all all of the different things that that um, people are doing with the platform, you know, just taking the platform and, and running with it. But so how does how does it work? Um, what what are the capabilities of this platform? Why are people choosing to use it? So um, this is <laughs> uh, this is sort of an overwhelming diagram, right? It's it's uh, very complicated, and the but that, that's that's sort of the point is this platform. This is what runs edX.org. edX.org itself is a very large, sophisticated site. has a lot of different capabilities. It's important that it have this level of complexity in order to deliver education at scale. That is our mission, and that is what the the platform is designed to do. But let's, let's just drill into this a little bit. All right, so let's start, starting with the, the, the teaching and learning, right? So this is you know, the core, uh, core student experience type things. Um, I think Carlos uh, touched on this a little bit with some screenshots of the types of, of content types and, and problem types that um, you can use in the 
uh, Open edX platform, right here, this, you, you, I'm sure you can't see it because it's tiny, and this is a little screenshot from, um, from our, our documentation. This is just like a, maybe half the list of, of the things that are documented um, in terms of the different content types, assessment types that you can use when building a course on the Open edX platform. There are things like um, the chemical equation problem. There's uh, a molecule editor and molecule viewer. There's uh, the circuit schematic builder problem, which is you know from Anand's first uh, circuits course. Um, so there's there's those sort of subject specific types of things, and then there's uh, integrations. We have an LTI integration. We have you can embed content using iframes. Um, all sorts of things like that. Now, all of these things are built on this extensibility plugin architecture we call Xblocks. Everything that is in a course that a student sees is Xblocks. There are structural Xblocks, so uh, you, a, a vertical or a subsection, those things are Xblocks. Those are the, the ways that you structure the course. Um, but then the, the problem types and content types are X-blocks as well. So um, we, we created this because this is how we, we see um, continuing to innovate and get new ideas into the platform is we want people to be building these X-blocks and contributing them, trying them out on their own platforms, telling us what is and isn't working so that we can use it on edX.org, but also so that they can be used across those 300 other sites. Um, so there's, uh, X, there's an Xblock directory in our wiki. There's over 50 Xblocks listed there, in addition to the ones that um, edX itself has built. Um, but I want to talk about a specific example of uh, this peer instruction Xblock. So this is a really interesting story. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how it works and then um, how it came about. So, the idea here is you have a, a learner is presented with um, a multiple choice question. It's sort of you know, your classic online quiz sort of thing. Um, they, they, they choose their answer, but then they're asked to sort of fill out a short field saying why they think that's the right answer. When they hit submit, they aren't presented with the correct answer immediately. They're actually presented with the answers choose, chosen and the uh, explanations given by many, many other learners on the platform, their initial answers. And so they, they're prompted to review those and then think about, well, how does that relate to my answer? This person put something different and they had a different reason why. Why is that? And then finally, once they've gone through that process, then they're shown the instructor's answer and their explanation. But this is a much more engaging way for a person to think about the question that is being asked, understanding the perspectives of other students, and getting different kinds of, of feedback um, that uh, you know, a, a single instructor couldn't provide. And that really leverages the scale of um, having a massive open online course. So, so this is a really amazing idea, and it was actually written by the University of British Columbia. Um, they're an edX partner, but it's actually not, that's not, that's actually not the important part. Um, they, they, it, it doesn't matter that they were a partner. They had a great idea, and they went and did it. They produced the research and showed that this was an effective way of teaching online, and they contributed to the platform, and now everyone has access to this tool, um, both on edX.org and any other open edX instance. And we expect to see continued examples of this. Like I said, this is, this is based on pedagogical research that has been done multiple papers published around this tool and its effectiveness. So teaching and learning is the core of, of the experience, but it, I think one of, one of the differentiating features of, of the open edX platform, we, we open, open source everything that we do. And that includes um, not just the, the course uh, content, the studio and the, the learning system, but um, things like uh, platform and commerce, 
So course catalog, for a long time, this was actually the only part of um, edX.org that was closed source because it was a Drupal site and essentially there was no different difference between like the course individual content, like the, this is what this course is about and like Drupal. And so it didn't make, make like we would just be open sourcing Drupal. Um, but now we've pulled out the specific features uh, for a course catalog and they are now like a REST API and they can be used to integrate with um, any, uh, any sort of CMS or other way that you would want uh, users to be able to discover your courses. Additionally, that also means that we now have an API for edX.org. So if you wanted to say, well, here are the courses that we're offering, but if you want to find courses on edX.org, we can send you there as well. That can be done through um, our uh, APIs now. Um, another area that this uh, covers is e-commerce. So uh, we have uh, an e-commerce platform called um, Auto. Uh, has anyone here ever watched, um, is, or has anyone here ever heard of the, the American uh, kids show uh, Sesame Street? Is that, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so there's a um, character, uh, well, so, there's a character, uh, Oscar, Oscar the Grouch. Um, his his brother is is named Otto, and so our, our e-commerce platform is based on a um, a, a Python e-commerce library called Oscar, and our, ours is named Otto for Oscar's brother. So, um, so the Otto platform is uh, the the e-commerce uh, platform you can use to set up things like coupons and shopping carts and all of those things for. Um, if you're uh, selling access uh, to, say, you know, credentials or, or things like that for your course. Um, Insights is another uh, big piece of the, the OpenEdX platform. We have this sophisticated uh, analytics platform. Carlos showed uh, some of the, the video analytics uh, in his presentation. Um, we've also launched this uh, per learner analytics feature. So you can see at an aggregate level what people are doing, where things are, are standing out, like at the, the video, you know, in the video player. You can also dive into the individual learners and see how they're doing so that you can do perhaps individual interventions or find patterns uh, amongst uh, individual learners. And we have a mobile app. So we have uh, Android and iOS applications. These are also open source. Um, the 2.0 version that was released in um, this winter in uh, January, February um, uh, includes all of the things essentially that you would need to do to complete a course on, on the mobile app. Um, so about 80 to 90% of, of assessment types are included. It includes uh, discussion forums, course discovery, push notifications. <laughs> Anyone can take the mobile app code for Android or iOS. They can customize it with their branding. They can um, configure it to talk to their OpenEdX instance and launch their own mobile app for their um, organization. Uh, and people have, have, have done that. So, so how, do, how do you get, get started with, with this, this platform? And there's, there's a, obviously, there's a, a lot there. Um, so. Uh, we have these resources here. Um, we have the Open edX portal. Uh, this is sort of the, the hub of, of all the information um, about the, the Open edX system. Um, and then we have our, our documentation site, uh, docs.edX.org. This features um, both like learner documentation, course instructor, course author documentation, as well as system administrator documentation, developer documentation. They're all included here. Um, and we release the, the documentation for each um, open edX release that we do. Uh, so we've had, uh, we're about to have our sixth um, release. We released Eucalyptus uh, this summer. It was our fifth. Um, they're alphabetical tree names. Um, so we had Eucalyptus this summer, Ficus uh, this winter. Um, so this is the primary way that people install the open edX platform is using one of these releases. We actually release edX.org. Um, parts of it we release like almost every day. Um, for the most part, the biggest parts we release maybe once a week. We're going to be releasing that even more. It's going to be released like uh, daily or even multiple times a day. Most people don't want to do that. If you have your own customizations, you have your own 
um, theme, theming, uh, different features that you have installed, you're going to want to be able to um, test those with the new version, those things. And that's where we came up with this program. Um, you know, we provide instructions of upgrading from one release to the next. And uh, that's, that's uh, supported and all of that. Um, so th th that's what we found is his work. So we do about two a year at this point. <coughs> So that's it. Um, that's what I had to uh, share with you about the OpenEdX platform. Um, I have a, a few minutes for questions. Um, if anyone uh, has a question, I can answer. Could you elaborate a little bit more about the mobile app? I'm mobile. very interested in that part. Sure. Um, I guess, is there a specific area uh, of the mobile app that you're interested in? So you, it's, it's available um, on GitHub. You, uh, it's, it, it's tagged as part of the release. Uh, there are instructions for how to um, customize it. There's a community. We actually have, um, if you go to the OpenEdX portal, I, I forgot to say, um, we have a Slack team. Um, that you can join, anyone can join, and there are people available there to, to help you. Um, but uh, was there a specific area that you're, you're interested in? Backward, backward compatibility with the previous versions of OpenEdX? Uh, no, so the mobile app, you, you would need to, um, I don't know how, how well we test and document this because it's mostly driven by the community. We would say that if you have the Eucalyptus version of the mobile app, it will work with the Eucalyptus version of the OpenEdX platform, but we don't test um, mixing them up. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you for the presentation. I would like to know what's the position of OpenEdX regarding OER, if, you, if any. Uh, so, you know, we uh, strongly encourage the, the use of, of open educational resources. Um, there's some support in the platform. Um, for the most part, uh, we want to, uh, you know, support whatever content um, people are, are bringing to us. Uh, I think in general, uh, it's, it doesn't have a, a big impact whether you're using open educational resources or um, copyright. It's sort of up to you to, to maintain that. Um, we do have, so we have a format called OLX, um, which is the Open Learning XML, and that is how our courses are represented uh, when you import them and export them. Right now, you can only import and export a whole course at a time. If you are very smart, you can look through it and you can find the pieces that you want. So you could copy and paste, like export a course, find the piece that you want, paste it into a course, and re import it. We want to make that process easier to make sharing pieces of OLX easier. And that is a way in which we want to better support OER so we can actually be generating resources from the platform. Um, but there are a number of Creative Commons licensed courses that you can download and install on your own um, OpenEdX platform. Today, Dartmouth um, does that and a number of universities uh, open source all of their courses. First, thank you very much for your presentation. I found it also very interesting. And my question is about the, um, how easy or difficult is to integrate the learning analytics tools into the OpenEdX platform? So the, the Insights platform? Yes. Yeah. So um, the, the Insights platform, I, I would say, uh, is sophisticated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's complex. Um, so it, it does require someone to be willing to uh, understand um, the, the system. It's, it's based on Hadoop and, and things like that. So it is, it is complicated to run. There are um, other analytics tools that people have built in the, the community. Um, there's one built, I think, by uh, University of Queensland and a couple of others um, that are simpler. Um, but, you know, Insights was designed for edX.org and for 10 million learners. Um, there are solutions that people have built for that don't need that scale, but um, are, are easier to, to use. Any other questions? Any other 
Thank you very much. Pues, once again, thank you very much.